Okay, so I feel like I need to give a little warning to this podcast. <laughs> I finally got Mark to sit down and listen to everything about HRT. He's over there looking a bit dodgy. So in the really for the first part of this podcast, it's very much just me talking to Mark. So if anyone's come list, waiting for a male voice, he is there. <laughs> And we do get in some really good stuff. We talk about all things hormones. I really, 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 more than any other podcast that we've ever done, want men to listen to this podcast because I think so much of what goes on for us as women with our hormones is is shrouded in some kind of... Well, it's not secrecy. It's kind of like an ignorance on all sides, I think. So I've had an epiphany. Mark's had an epiphany. It's a really, really good chat. Men should not be excluded from conversations about HRT, premenstrual tension, hormone replacement therapy, because you are actually, you actually play a big part in this because, as Mark says, it's men on pause. Let's have a listen. You just nicked my best line. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Confessions of, no, how to stay married. What are we talking about? That's not Mark, that's the dog <laughs> <laughs> drinking water. We are still podcasting from our home, so please do forgive any background We always podcast noise. from our home. I know, I'm trying to be flash. <laughs> okay, and I'm that's sitting slightly further back because I've got extraordinarily sharp sunlight on my face. <laughs> so last week I did um, a live on YouTube all about um, me taking HRT. And... I was saying to Mark this morning, for about the first 10 minutes of this live, I kept apologising to all the men that might have come to the live, not realising I was talking about HRT. Right. And then I suddenly put the brakes on and thought, what the hell am I doing apologising? Because menopause and the effect of it and then the repercussions and then HRT and the possibilities that can um, come from taking HRT impact massively. Well. As I've always said, men on pause. Yeah. We are on pause. You That's are it. on pause. And you are on pause. Because you're sort of like preserved an aspect, kind of. Yeah. Because like you don't want to do wrong, but you don't know how not to do wrong. Well, we man. had a very long and ranging conversation Did you? Entire, over the entire day yesterday, whether it be in makeup or in our meeting or in the commercial breaks on Loose Women, um, talking about this. We've talked about menopause about... before. We talked about that was when I made the shock statement that I did consider leaving you. It's the only <laughs> time I've considered leaving you. But I mean, but I think that, yeah, I mean, HRT, I always think of HRH for some reason, a Royal Highness, but HRT is something that I have a, obviously a sense of hormone replacement therapy. Well, now it's going to be quite interesting because you're sat opposite me recording. You're actually going to have to listen about, listen no, to No, 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 absolutely. And I'm, sure you're, I'm sure you're... All, all I noticed, I know you did a live about this where I think Coffee Moaning last weekend. And um, all that I saw when I dropped in on the live was the word Viagra flying up the screen. Typical you. And I couldn't work out why because I don't need... It's kind of difficult to know where to start with this conversation as I'm sitting here actually because... Okay, so maybe if I start with... I I try and be as natural with everything, as natural as I can with everything I do. Mm. I would never just have antibiotics willy-nilly. You know, any vaccine I would have, I would really, really think about it. Um, even taking a headache pill, I really consider I'll try lots of other things, you know, neck massage, a glass of water, have I done this, go for a bit of pressure. So I'm very, very conscious of everything that I that I put in my body. I think it's years of raving, actually, and just feeling really bad about everything I've done to my body right. in the past. Yeah. And then becoming a mum and just being so aware that suddenly you're in your your you've got the responsibility of other human beings. And I think that's where mm. it all comes from. But mm. anyway. So, first of all, first things first, because I think this is, I think men on a way, in a way, do, are put on pause at various hormonal times mm. of a woman's life. And this is what we were kind of admitting to each other yesterday. Mm. And I was like, I said to the girls yesterday, God, I said, I've got to have a conversation with Mark about this because I don't really want to admit it. Admit what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of, I slightly feel like a hostage. I don't really understand what the hell we're talking about. I don't want to admit what? that you have sometimes been a victim of my hormones. Right. Okay. 
But now, six months into having HRT, I realise that you have been not as much of a victim as I've been, but you have been collateral damage mm. to a large degree. Um, so right from when you have a baby, I mean, I... Okay, I'm going to make a big statement first of all. Since having HRT six months ago, I now feel more like I felt. I, I haven't felt like this since before I had children. Right. Wow. That's so amazing. I feel back like I'm in my late 30s, early 40s. And it's really interesting because when I spoke, when Christ. I was a very <laughs> reluctant... That's Mother Nature agreeing with Yeah. <laughs> when I very reluctantly went into a consultation with Dr. Louise Newson, who is, mm. you know, all things HRT and menopause. She is the menopause doctor. I was very sort of reluctant, mm. to, kind of in a way, but my interest had been really piqued because... My friend Kay had written this book about menopause and we'd both been no HRT sisters for the last yes. 10 years or whatever it was. That's why I, was, yeah, I mean, that's my sense of it. I was shocked when you decided. Yeah, it kind of almost looking down our nose at other women mm. that had taken HRT. If they're not aware of the, the, the dangers and how can you just do that to have better skin and better mm. hair and all these other things that come with HRT. Um, and so then when she started to research these book, this book and started to talk to more and more women, and she was sharing with me, and she was like, oh, God, Nigel, I wonder if we should get into this a bit more. Because oestrogen, oh, my God, this really is hormonal out there. Oestrogen... Fence is going to go over in a minute. ...is, in many ways, I believe now, the very life force of a woman. Right. right? You need oestrogen for almost everything. Brain function, heart, healthy heart, bones... Everything, your sex life, your health of your hair, your skin, everything. Think of it almost as like the fuel of your body, mm. okay? And we're not taught really any of this at school properly. So you, you have a baby, you finish your childbearing years, and your estrogen, estrogen drops away, your hormones drop away, okay? And because we would have normally, we would have been expected to die a couple of years later, but we're yeah. living 60, 70, 80, 90 years old without sure. this life force, yeah. I feel, life force hormone. Um, and Dr. Newson New is very passionate about this show because relationships are broken, divorces happen that never needed mm. to happen, people leave their careers, People's businesses are broken up. People fall out with their children. Mm. People like me live in fear that they've got Alzheimer's. Um, you know, heart health is diminished, osteoporosis, all because of this lack, or, or can be because of a lack of estrogen, right. right? So when I first saw her, and I'm eight years after my menopause, so, you know, um, she said to me, what are your symptoms? I said, well, I haven't got any symptoms. I mean, I've had my menopause, mm. I haven't got any symptoms. I don't bleed profusely anymore. I don't have the sweats. I don't mm. have, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still a little bit anxious, but, you know. Anyway, she said to me, this is classic because you don't know that you've got symptoms because in some ways you will have changed and you've fundamentally to changed it. Yeah. and you now don't used know. used to it. Yeah. And it was like an epiphany because I've had so many moments and I think this will be interesting for you if I was your partner, I'd be in, very interested in this where I've got such a grip of fear, where I feel like I've totally lost myself and I don't know why that is. What, you're having that now? Or you no, no, that... pre-HRT. Pre, right. pre it's like, it's just say, such it's a just fear. Calm down. <laughs> no, and I think that if a relationship is very rocky, the, the messages can get really mixed. Oestrogen is also your nurturing hormone. Mm. You know, so I always make the joke, don't I? Before menopause, if somebody said they were hungry, I said, like, oh, do you want mustard? Do you want mayonnaise? Do you mm. want, do you like a little lettuce in your sandwich? And then after menopause, it's like, well, I made some sandwich. You know, something just changes in you. And, but anyway, so she said, you will notice what your symptoms are three, four, five, six months into having your HRT because they will dissipate. And that's what's happened to me. Right. It's just totally un. Believable. My biggest regret is that somebody didn't hit me over the head eight years ago and stick an HLT patch on me. Right. Because I think, um, and getting to the marriage side of it, I feel really sorry for both of us. I feel really sorry for all marriages in this because nobody knows what the hell is going on. Mm. 
and you're attributing all well, my anxiety was just awful. I was anxious about anything. Sorry, we didn't so think... we don't know why, but the phone suddenly cut out. Yeah. So if I'm in a slightly different place, that's right. So I think I was saying I felt sorry for both of us and everybody, but yes. you actually don't know what's going on. You don't know it. It creeps up on you by osmosis. It's not not by osmosis. What's it called? It just creeps up Stealthily. on you. Stealthily. Stealthily. Yeah. That there's some word I'm looking for. I can't find it. Still the brain fog. Slowly. Still the brain brain fog. Um, yeah, it just creeps up on you without. It's insidious. Mm. That's it. It just creeps up Poppy. on you, and before you know it, well, you don't even know it. You just think that's the way you've always right. been. Now, do you do you remember when we were talking about this yesterday? I said, "Oh my God, if I tell Mark this, Mark's just going to go." Oh, a lot of women, and you've always said this in a really derogatory way that's really pissed me off. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've just sat this here, I've just sat here nodding. This I don't really know what's going on. This is a woman talking about their hormones. I, don't, and I mean, I, know. I know what HRT stands right, for. Right, listen to this. Yes. You're going to love this. Right. So you well, know how know you said, you've always said, what happens? Why do so many women get to a certain age and then they get really angry and really defensive and really, you know, and, and just so entrenched in the way that they do things mm. and the way, and, and I've always got a bit like edgy with that and just felt it's no, no. really sexist. Yeah. But we were talking about this yesterday. When your hormones go to a large degree, because you shift, because I, obviously I can't speak for everyone, because I and all the women I was speaking to yesterday, I spoke to a lot of women yesterday, shift something shifts in you so much there's fear that comes in with that you almost like you feel like you're standing on sand and you're losing something but you don't know what it is you can't put your finger on it because it kills your your sex drive sex becomes a really weird thing mm. to you where you're just like like somebody said to me yesterday uh, and she takes HRT she said before HRT she said I might see something on the telly you know how you would say to me well, how come you turned into such a prude like you'll see a, a sex scene and it seems so bizarre. Like when you're younger, you think about sex all the time and then suddenly sex seems really bizarre. Like you'll see a scene on But naked telly. attraction comes on and you, you go mad. What are you suggesting? You're more tolerant of that sort of stuff. Well, so hang on. <laughs> because you seem more anti-naked nudity than you've ever been. Well, I don't like, I do not like hairless penises and I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. Okay. And naked attraction, they've, none of them have got any hair. And it's disgusting. Okay. Okay. And with HRT or not HRT, right. stick an HRT patch right on their ding dangy, okay. and I'm still going to think it's disgusting. Okay. But you know, what I'm trying to explain to you is that it's like I literally don't know where like we're going with you any of this. It's like suddenly your penis is just taken away. You didn't know what it was there for. <laughs> what the right? hell is going on? This is what. <laughs> what do you mean? In what regard? You haven't got one. No, I'm trying to say to you. When your estrogen oh, what and it would testosterone, be like for a man. women don't understand. I didn't know this, but we have almost more testosterone than men. Right. Right. So what happens is your testosterone goes mm. like, um, like almost. Well, I think she thinks she said mine has gone completely. No estrogen. Right. So these are, these are you know your driving. For, these are your sex hormones. Right. So what happened to me was I couldn't even remember what being like a very sexual person. There wasn't even a memory of it. Right. It wipes your memory. So you'd see a sex scene on telly and you'd just be like, it would just seem, and every woman I said this to yesterday and that I was speaking to over the last couple of days agreed, almost violent. Right. I mean, not all the time, but you just, it's just you change and it's a change. And then when you have- What's like, changed? When, well, because then when you have HRT, not everyone, but for me and most of the women I speak to, you realise that that's what you've become. You don't realise, you're not, you're not conscious of it. Mm. I, I wasn't, I had no consciousness of that change in me. But now as I realise that, I go, oh, that's quite sexy. Or that's, that's a change. That's a massive change back to who I was. Or if I go, yeah, let's get a rucksack and just jump on a plane and let's just right. go anywhere. That's more like me. I've lost me for eight to ten years. Sounds like you're becoming Shirley Valentine. No, not at all. No, it's the complete opposite. That I think you, I think if you're in a bad relationship, I think that 
actually it would fire up a, a uh, desire uh, either to way up. by not by by not getting treated for your mm. hormone deficiency because that's what it is it's a hormone deficiency sure. it's like louise newson says if you had a vitamin d efficiency if you had a vitamin e deficiency mm. if you told you would rush to get whatever it is and yet these driving forces these hormones that we need for our bodies to work are we deficient and nobody, and, and because of very bad press over many years, mm. women are terrified of taking it. You know, it used to be made out of hormones in horses' piss, mm. but now it's made of yam. Can I just ask, what do you want me to bring to the table? No, I'm just trying to well, explain no, just, to I'm you. I'm thinking I could put a mannequin here till you've said what you've said and then we can no, pick no, up no, the chat. No, 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 because this is a rare podcast because this is something you know nothing about. In a minute, you're going to get a chance to ask questions, but I just feel like I have to tell you all this stuff because I know you don't understand and you're not really interested in what I am I'm interested. to tell you off-camera. Off-camera? So, right. I know that you're taking hormone replacement therapy. I was a bit... Tick. Yeah. Okay, you know one yeah, thing. No, no. What else I, you know? I, I was a little bit potentially disparaging at first because it suggested to me you'd got me so signed up to your anti it from a mm. holistic perspective mm. that I felt something I odd? thought what the hell's going on this is a complete reversal this is a complete show. not that it bothers me I mean it's not about me but it is kind of about me I realized after the event and then you and then you were taking it and then I made a I'd crack a few jokes about sitting on a tub of testosterone and suddenly my bollocks were bigger and things like that and you were like, that's really insensitive at some point you said that. And I actually... Yeah, because you were saying it yeah, every yeah, yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. No, no, really no, no, annoying. no. And I heard Ooh, you. Oh, is that your voice a bit deeper? Yeah. Oh, you're looking a bit hairy. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's be honest. It's five o'clock shadow Which annoyed that. me because yeah. you hadn't listened to anything no, I no, said no. about <laughs> HRT before that. You were just like, oh, here he is. No, no, no. But to be fair, okay, listen. It's a bit private. I heard that. And so I stopped. You did. And I, respect, fair, and, did. I, and I respected that. And every time I went, I had a quip to go to something, I wouldn't. Every time you had a what? When I wanted to sort of say a quip or say oh. a joke or something. I thought, well, I won't, because actually it's not fair. And then I have, I can't, I'd be lying if I said, I've been trying to suss the lay of the land to see if there's been a major difference in you. But I would say that, and we don't talk about these things, and I understand why we don't talk about these things in detail, because of the girls and what have you, but I have noticed a difference in your facial mm. appetite mm. and interest and all that kind of stuff. And I've, you know, apart from obviously naked attraction, I've noticed that. So... <laughs> Um, if anyone's just listening to this, doesn't know what the hell is talking about. I have a visceral vlogs. response yeah, yeah. to the naked attraction. But no, no, no. But and this is not to talk about the fact that that's the only thing. It's my right. energy as well. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, sure. Like, there's been loads of times over the last six months where you said, oh, "Well, we won't do that because." And I was saying this to the girls yesterday. It had just become the norm that from about three o'clock I couldn't do much. Yes. Because I was knackered, and now I go. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Because actually, do you know what it's been like for years? Like I've been walking through treacle. Sure. And that's one of the things Dr. Louise Newson said to me. She said, when this has really kicked in, you will have that energy. I have that energy. I've got drive mm. coming back. All that stuff that just felt like a mountain to climb. Mm. Because I've been deficient in a hormone is vital. Mm. Like if I was deficient in vitamin D, everyone would know why I was depressed. But I think more white brittle bones. Yeah, you know? what we're starting to drive towards is that I think men's experience of these things, we've talked about the minimal pause before. It was a very interesting conversation we had about a year and a half, two years ago, wasn't it? On this on this platform. To watch yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. But it do, these conversations do pivot around. A lot of relationship conversations and things pivot around sexual drive, estrogen, testosterone. They're all parts of the sexual contingent. And it is about being different genders. And so sex, you can't talk about it and mm. not talk about sex. It's like pretending it doesn't exist. And I think sex as, I mean, I can't remember who said it the other day. Someone said it on something, or maybe it was someone we know, said something about, I don't want a really good friendship with someone, with you. Mm. And I think it might be married at first sight. I don't want a really good friendship with, you know, a really I've good friendship. Friends. Yeah, I've got friends. There's got to be a sexual contingent to it. Mm. Otherwise, what is defining this as different? What's defining this as something other than companionship, which is nice and lovely. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, you know, partnership. Mm, yeah, it's nice and great. It's all really grown up words with ship on the end. I just want a sexual relationship with the partner That's that I really right. fancy. Yeah. And I still fancy you. And I have your right really dialed down in recent years, prior, prior to almost the last year and a half, dialed down that side of myself a lot. Mm. A real and lot. I think, and I think, and I do feel really sorry for men because I think, you know, women, we have babies and that's hugely 
Oh my God. I mean, you will, well, you can never imagine what that feels like physically. Mm. The shift in you is just so seismic. The exhaustion, the absolute exhaustion from waking up every couple of hours, mm. a child constantly on you, needing no, no, you, scraping you, wanting you. Da, da, da. But that doesn't take away the fact that, the, that, that your partner is put on pause. They are. Men we can't pause. just have a situation where, because we are feminists, that we don't understand that mm. you are pushed to one side. So yeah, and it's a secondary answer, detail. You're going yeah. through it. It's a bit like pregnancy. I would never stand there. I mean, I Nobody's need, experience I don't is like, worse. No, I think no, it's no, just no. all of our no, no, experiences. No, 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 but also I have a real sort of resistance to men who said, oh, yeah, we had a baby or I had. I do find that it does, always makes me go a bit funny when I hear that. No, I haven't had a baby. I am a father. I go through becoming, I've become a parent, and it's a very entirely different experience. So, you know... But I'm it's not, still a valid I recognise that it's a far... Well, and also, I'm a big believer, because I can feel it in myself, that I have hormonal shifts, pushes, changes, drives, complete, oh l complete removal of drives at times, which are, for me, because I'm such a nutcase, is like, where the hell's that gone? It's really odd. I find that really odd. Do I think that it's all going to be solved necessarily with some kind of equivalent HRT for me? I don't know. I don't think well, so. Well, a lot I don't more men now know. being put on testosterone. I know they are, but then I do, you know, if I'm really honest, I do get to the point where I think we can keep medicalising everything to the point that everything is a financial incentive. You know, it's like big pharma, big pharma, big pharma. And all I, but parking that aside, I think men do go through a, a smaller equivalent hormonal shift. But I think it's fine to just admit and say it's a bigger, much, much bigger but what about significant not problem for women. not saying it's about hormones? What about saying that as women that we recognise it doesn't diminish what we've gone through and, and, and what we've had to face and endure, you know, with mm. breastfeeding and, and childbirth and all those very challenging things. It doesn't diminish what we've gone through to say this is also difficult for you. It doesn't diminish yeah, it's not what like we go a feminist through team down, is it? with no. premenstrual tension. I mean, now with the two girls, I watch them go through pre premenstrual tension and I don't have that anymore. I see how difficult it is to be around premenstrual tense people. But when you're in it, you are just in the hell of your hormones. You can't understand why anyone's questioning you. And, you know, there is a blinkeredness that comes in. But I just wanted to ask you a question on when you said, so does this mean a Shirley Valentine moment? I think that very much depends on your relationship. Yeah. I think if you are in a, in a relationship where somebody doesn't want to meet what you're saying, or like, I suppose in a way, this conversation is me kind of apologising to you that I was in such a mess myself that I couldn't really see how that was impacting on you because I didn't know, because actually I didn't know how it was impacting on me. It's mm. only now that I can stand back and I can look and I can say, and this is why I said to girls yesterday, I feel like I've got to apologise to Mark, but I don't want to because I don't want to be But wrong. you know what, you, but, you, but you saying all of that, and I hear what you're saying, it reminds me of what a difficult position well-meaning men are in. Yeah. In... 2021 and i mean all i mean by well-meaning men is men who uh, you know recognize the needs of women the rights of women uh you know i'm a father to, to four daughters incredibly strong women i'm proud of them for their strength and their their huge personalities and and, and you're a strong woman and i like you because you're a strong woman and all that kind of stuff and one has to respect it and wants to respect all of those things but i've been around women i have been around so many women all my life i mean i don't know i don't have a father all that kind of stuff and yet when you say that, I realise the only option I had and the only option men like me have is to acquiesce, shut it's the fuck wait. up, get on, wait. Well, that's... In a, in a sense, dampen our lights in a way that no women that we respect Will do would ever age. want to do, we'll do ever, we'll do, yeah. ever, ever. Ever. Well, not ever. No, 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 no. And I don't mean that in a cross. I'm just saying ever because actually... Well, no, it depends what kind of relationship Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But, I'm, I'm, com like no, 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 but I'm coming from a position of assuming that there's a balance and equitable... shared feminist relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. sort of an equ equitable relationship. Obviously, no. I mean, an imbalanced relationship, not. But what I mean is, is that, you know, you would, I, you would never ask that of... You would never ask of yourself what was... I essentially was asking of myself 
although I wasn't even aware I was asking it, I was just changing. I'm confused now, what were you asking? No, 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 of, of damp asking dampening what? down so many expectations, dampening down so many parts of the relationship because I recognised that there was a shift, this is what happens, mm. this is the way we go, this is the way we move, and of course, what is one's choice? I'm not gonna become a marauding idiot. You were, you were, we, I accepted that there was changes in you and changes happen, and, and all I'm saying is, is that, you know, to hear you say that, I'd certainly, I don't see it in those terms of apologies. I don't well, think no, okay, not apology, because it was nobody's mistake, but a recognition. Yeah, no, I know what An I acceptance that I, I, I kind of, it's like a mist has been lifted from my eyes and sometimes I catch myself and I'm looking at you and I feel really bad, I feel really sad for you because I think there has, I mean, this is not to say you're not a fucking pain in the ass as well. I was going to say, the well. feminist in me is going, don't feel sorry for any bloke. No, no, sorry... <laughs> I should stop saying you. I should keep saying us as a couple, as right. a married couple, right. which is very relevant within this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us. But, and I feel angry. And a couple of my friends I was talking to yesterday said they feel really angry that there's been a disservice, that we don't get the treatment that we're supposed to get. Right. That right. so many doctors, I mean, I can't remember. Somebody told me the amount of time that it's spent with the GP learning about the menopause. Why aren't people taught about this in school? It mm. happens to every single woman on the planet this happens to. And, and they are spending millions upon millions on giving women antidepressants that don't need antidepressants. And can I ask, do most and people... Just quickly on the set thing. On the what? You can't say that... Because not... Okay, so we, why we talked a lot about Viagra the other day on the live mm. was... That was made, you know, there was a problem mm. with men and it's like, this cannot happen. Solved. Men cannot have their sex drive affected, you sure. know, and there you go. And now you can go and buy it in the chemist mm. and anyone can go and buy it. But actually women have been told for decades, well, just, well, yeah, you're at that age. Well, mm. you sort of dried up, you mm. used up, you've had your childbearing years. This isn't something that you can just have for yourself because it's a wonderful thing to have. It's, it's like, it, it, it's, you know, just get on with it. Mm. And, and and that's why I think a lot of us do get this kind of, this other, this kind of like almost anger. I'm thinking of one person in particular, I'm not going to say their name, that we both know, that I would say is the manifestation of what I'm talking about. Mm. Absolute manifestation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on such an extreme degree. Yeah. You know, I've kept saying to you about, this is a friend of mine that I don't want to mention him. I keep saying to you, I don't remember her being mm. this way. She's mm. like a completely different mm. person. Mm. And it's th it's that. Yeah, and that person that this person has become is the very thing that I wanted to divorce in you at the mm. worst time, which is, and I, I know I'm reminded of what, you, I'm reminded of what you said I described. The, the, I think the problem I had or have or had at times, or have at times, is that thing of, you're, you know, as a woman of a certain age, you're clearly going through something. Nobody knows what the fuck Nobody it is. knows what it is. But the biggest problem with it all is we can't even name it. And this is the part that still, after 50 years of having been around women, menstrual cycles and everything, and as a father who wants to be really catering and sensitive to the needs of every woman I love mm. at those points mm. that they're struggling, and, and I've still, and I've still not got an answer on this, and it's still not clear after 50 years of me asking. If you know physically that you're heading towards a part of the month or a part of a feeling that is to do with this thing, and there are times where you can identify as it's clearly I'm having a bit of a moment or whatever it is. If a man, a well-meaning man, not a man who's using it in a sort of misogynistic way or a way to belittle caricature. Mm. Uh, actually, or, uh, with the caveat or, with all of this, guys, yeah, yeah, absolutely. when you've got a decent person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and I'm not looking to go, oh, put it on you. Oh, is it, but is seriously saying, okay, is it your time of the month? Just not say, to have... the worst thing you can say. No, 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 no. You've just done it again. This know, is why no weird. progress has ever been made. I know. Because, because the, I don't because, think you're Because women, by saying, don't even say it, it's like cancel culture. I know. So a well-meaning man can't even go, oh, but it's fine, because now I know. No, but Hang on, now I know. I'll do X, Y, and Z. you do know. It's rather like saying you don't always to know. somebody that is depressed. You don't always know, because women change. So are no, you hang feeling on, hang down? On. Just totally like, disagree. Yeah. Totally, no, no, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited by this conversation. It's not, I'm in passion. No, but we don't know. And we don't know for this reason. You should put the dates down. We in do know. No, we do put know. The dates no, 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 no. Twenty-eight day cycle. No, because when it is it, and we do know, 
and we know you say, women, it's not. No, I know that's why I'm saying it. I'm giving a really good bit of advice now. Know it and keep it to yourself. Yeah, when but, it comes to but, but the woman before you, whether it be daughter, mother or wife, who says it's not and you know it is, they then say it's you. And I'm, what? Well, it's not me? No, but in it's all not me. our years of marriage and all the years I was having a period, you never learn to just not say it. The you only knew it. Option, Why did you ask? The me? only option women often leave men is for men to literally travel. I think that's the best or thing. Or hibernate. I think that's the best thing. I, but, I, if I we hibernate, but if we hibernate, you have a go at us for not being there, for not being available, to have a go at. And this is the part of it all. I think sometimes the, 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 the characterization of the woman of a certain age, menopausal, that you were just saying that I would always moan about, is the one that wants the problem. They want men there. Can I to tell be, you what you to, do? They want men there. No, this is really important, based on what you were saying, you had your conversation with your friends. I do think there's a desire on women to want to keep men there in a angry perspective towards themselves because it distracts from the awfulness of what maybe, the woman's going through in a woman. And so it's like the man, pull him close, move, pull him away. Pull him. And so it's really difficult to know what I to mean, do. I mean, I think for each woman, it's different what they need. I always, when I was premenstrual, wanted to be around women more than I wanted to be around men. It's just, I can't help it. That's just Isn't a fact. that funny? Whenever women are premenstrual, I always want to be around anyone other than women yeah mm. but you know i think that that's okay to say that i yeah. love the differences between men and women mm. and actually to not go mm, is this your time of the month yeah no or i agree yeah bit, all of that it it diminishes this is where it goes wrong yes is that it diminishes how fucking awful, awful. you feel yeah you feel anxiety is off can be not everybody i'm talking about my husband anxiety is off the scale anything you've suppressed is magnified i'm not saying that it's You've suppressed it because this is what you never used to understand. You just go, what, so out of three weeks of the month are you hating me? It's not that, but it's just whatever niggles you have were magnified in that week. And it is never the time to discuss stuff is in that, for me, was that four days before my period. And yet you would be building to a crescendo because you would feel me pulling away and you will admit but maybe my ca maybe my mind wasn't on the calendar maybe i was just living my life you'd always go like, oh i know what this is well if you know what it is then just take yourself away and just be just leave me alone and but it's that, gonna pass but to be honest with you Imagine that's what it i do like with... a big black cloud with lightning that you could get hit by and just let it pass over but i have to be honest i do i mean any fathers out there with daughters i do do that with my daughters i do know yeah. from I, see, voice I, I look, see the way you are with them and i wish that's the I way really, you've been with me well it's taken many years yeah, of, but of, you've of, 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 of struggle but i think mark like this podcast i hope a lot of men listen to this because i do feel sorry for them because nobody tells them i think this should be a massive part of the curriculum because relationships breaking down and arguments around kids and all of that is a huge problem in the world. And mm. some of it, not all of it, is down to hormonal shift. Yeah. That no fucker has got the clue. It's not about I knew all this stuff and I was I, think, I was as oblivious as you were. You know, we all know God, my hormones are a bit crazy. They can make you paranoid. They can make you feel so awful about the yourself thing, your self-esteem yeah. can go to the floor and i think the nice thing the, the nice byproduct again caveat being if you're in a relationship where you know you, you, there's a sort of mutual respect and things are good and what have you uh or as good as can be um you know it, it, you know again without wishing to mention that <laughs> well, um the the reach of that side of things that i have noticed to change to into other parts of confidence Exactly. Feelings get, no, but for force, me, it? it makes me feel, you know, I've got all my own issues. We all have our own issues, but I feel desired again, which is which is really nice. And I think for many, it's not that you've never not, but for many years, it's, well, it, it really people, has been dialed push, down. People push each other away because, <clears throat> I mean, God, if I could bloody, oh, every woman that has said to me over the years, and this is pre-menopause, could if I could have had a pound for every woman that said, I wish sometimes I could hug my partner without them wanting, immediately thinking that's about sex. Mm. It's where it all begins, the distance. And that's mm. way before, way before. Um, and, and we were laughing about this yesterday because we were saying, God, it's so confusing for men though, isn't it? Because on the one hand, that might be absolutely, come on. But then on the other hand, it's yeah. not at all. But, we were, but I do think that's the mystery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and no, I no, do and think if fine. I was a man, I'd yeah. love all that. It's like, what the fuck's So for most on? of your friends that you've spoken to, has, it, has being on HRT helped with their yes. private relationships with yes. their fellas yeah. as well? Yeah, most of the people that I know. Every, every single woman, well, maybe two. 
every single woman I know, and some of the women I know that have had to come off it mm. because there's been a breast cancer scare mm. or whatever, please, please look at the research on mm. breast cancer and HRT. It's very different these days. Um, you know, couldn't wait to get back on it. And, and many women I know say, whatever risks there are, I'm going to stay on it because I never want to go back to So that. do I need to worry that you're going to want to go to swingers parties Mark, and all that kind Mark, of stuff? Mark, don't, don't do this. Are you going to, is it going to go so stratospheric that we just Mark. can't cope? <laughs> what? And here we have a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> No, I mean, but I can see also in yourself. So you're trying to backpedal. No, I'm not backpedaling. Look at you trying to go back to being feminist man. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> totally, totally. He's so weird. He's going, <laughs> trying, trying to get back up that ladder. <laughs> um, um, I'm really enjoying no, having a shake, guys. Back to the... <laughs> what I would say is, what I would say, if you really want, because I'm, I'm mindful that there could be some men, and I really hope there are some men that are listening mm. to this. If your wife or your partner is at the point, um, well, not just husbands as well, of course, there's same sex, there's same sex um, yeah, marriages, and actually, somebody was telling me about that the other day. My um, mother once said, my mother, my mother's gay, and she once said, she once said, she once said that being in a menopausal relationship with another woman. Is yeah. something else. Oh, maybe it was your mum that was yeah, talking was, to you about yeah. it because Mark's mum is going. In case maybe in case you didn't mm. know that. Yeah. So whatever, it, it's 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 exhausting. But so the advice that I would give is, um, <clears throat> first of all, try and get your partner to go to the menopause charity website and look at Dr. Louise Newson on Instagram, and all your questions can be answered properly because this is just my own mm. experience, and you need to consult a doctor properly. Um, but in the meantime, what I would say is sometimes just really, really hug and cuddle your partner and stroke their hair and do all of that with no sense that it leads uh -uh to anything. is coming to that. Mm. Because what happens is a fear comes in of an expectation you don't know where you are and then it becomes a distance and then it becomes more of a distance and then you push each other mm. away and then your partner feels less attractive and then you feel less attractive and it is literally this is why this is why relationships break up and you know i mean who knows maybe i'm going to talk a lot more about i don't know I'm, maybe i've done this live and this and i won't ever talk about it again who knows maybe i will become an hrt advocate freedom fighter i i don't know i just i know that i've your did myself a disservice yeah. and I think there are so many women that are so desperately unhappy and therefore their partners definitely desperately unhappy and it could be fixed. Yeah and, and you know we I would say have a very fiery and very passionate both good and bad relationship um, and I would for sure feel like I'm sounding like what's the name of the chat that Heidi was with in um, in married at married at first sight australia um you know we had we have we have a very passionate relationship highs and lows but fundamentally we like each other mm. and we we have a shared destination of recognizing that you have to work at shit for it to work um and i've noticed a huge difference in your energy and that energy spreads to all things it spreads to it spreads to everything though but i, I see it I see you're the reward in you of feeling that you can, I mean, it sounds bizarre, finish a book, read a book, yeah. do, st you know, I, I see you. I've been disabled. Yeah, well. In a way, it's kind of like a disablement because I've been so terrified all the time of my brain fog and thinking mm. I've got Alzheimer's, this exhaustion. Just Don't get me everything. wrong, she's still as irritating it's, as it's fuck. Like, it's like the top of, the, of my life force yeah. is just, yeah. it's just like, that much taken mm. off and it's for, the top bit and it's like yeah. and it's just like it's gone back on for the first Weird. time in many years i feel that when the girls have left home we could probably pop a backpack on our backs you'd be up for the jaunt that's what i want to do i might have never sex in a tent mark i would never have said that before i was like cottage by the sea to, you know you say that. shuffle up to the corner shop and back but now yeah. i'm like oh actually yeah. i've never been to and i'd love to go i mean yeah oh quite my something. god mark Eight years missed. Mm, right. Eight years. I've been waiting, babe. I've been waiting for you to come back, and you're back. Hmm. You're back. Should we go upstairs? You really, really annoyed me with this. You've been really childish. Sorry. No. On a serious, 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 serious. No. You're come on. Let's idiot. go up. You're going to go on about this all <laughs> bloody day now.